In this tape, we deal with a scenario involving an armed assailant with a handgun. The assailant is posing an imminent threat to the life of the defender. It's important to note that this is a very high level of danger. Cooperation with the assailant, if that will save you, that's what we recommend doing. But it's a well accepted fact that victims of violent crime often cooperate with their assailant. Give up the watch, give up the wallet, give up information and they're still assaulted, they're still shot, they're still killed. We want to be able to give you the tools to succeed, to survive the violent encounter. But that does not ignore the opportunity we may have to cooperate and flee the scene without any conflict. If you feel your life is in danger, or the life of a friend or a family member, you should have the knowledge that we're going to give you in these tapes to survive the encounter. Now, as in all areas of Krav Maga, we always look at what the danger is for a particular self-defense exercise. We analyze what is the danger, how do we remove it, how do we deal with the attacker, how do we end the conflict and leave when it's safe to do so, and when it's appropriate to do so. It's no different with a firearm. What's the danger with a firearm? Being in the line of fire at the time the weapon is discharged. It is important to note, though, that distances are crucial. At a great distance, your option may only be to seek cover if someone is trying to fire at you. At a close distance, and how do I define close? At a range within your reach or just immediately beyond your reach. We can function with defensive techniques to eliminate the threat, to control the weapon, and to disarm the assailant. The exercises that we're going to perform for you deal with threats that are issued from the front, from at a diagonal angle, from the side in front of the arm, at the side behind the arm, and to the rear of the defender. These exercises are our basic exercises for handgun defense. Other tapes will deal with more varying scenarios. It's also important that we comment here on the stress level in the exercises. It's very, very, very crucial that your training regimen includes stressful scenarios so that you will be familiar, familiar with how to function under stress in a real life situation. And of course, any training scenario involving defending against an assailant armed with a handgun must include scenarios that are stressful. Slapping, punching, pushing, screaming, yelling, Things that would simulate like a takeover robbery or some type of very, very hostile, aggressive action against the defendant. What is our approach? Our approach is four steps in any gun defense. Number one, we must redirect the line of fire. In other words, we must make a defense. How is that defense made? Well, it's made first of all by moving either the gun or the hand holding the gun. In addition, when we redirect the line of fire, we want to combine moving the target with actually moving the weapon. 
So those two things, a body defense and a hand defense, generally combine to make or create an overall earlier and more complete defense. Secondly, it is very important that we don't just redirect the line of fire and move the target, because that means maybe we only missed the first shot. We're concerned with danger in all its potential. If it's a semi-automatic weapon, it, the weapon itself may be armed with four, five, 10, or 11 more shots. So we must control the weapon so that the line of fire never comes back on us. One, redirect the line of fire, including a body defense. Two, control the weapon so that the line of fire can never return on us. Three, we must realize that the gunman who has the weapon in his hand, who feels all the power in the world is in their hands. Once you have defended, they will be fighting for their lives too. So stage number three is to attack the gunman with determination, very aggressively. We are fighting for our lives and we must not forget that. Stage one, redirect. Stage two, control the weapon. Stage three, to attack the gunman. And the final stage, if it's necessary, is to disarm the gunman. So in any exercise, we have four principles that are operating. The defensive principle, the control principle, the counterattack principle, and the disarming principle. That does not mean, however, that all of our exercises have four separate stages separated by time. In fact, most of our exercises are performed in fewer than four stages, and the way the four principles are covered is that they are occurring simultaneous to one another in the exercise. When you analyze gun defenses, it's key in understanding the exercises to understand the difference between a detectable movement and a movement that is very hard to detect. One of the things that we're attempting to do in all of our gun defenses, and the thing that we accomplish, is that we're training people to react in the least detectable movement. The defense is made in the shortest possible line. And when the gun is removed from the target area, it is also removed in the shortest line off the body. People would sometimes analyze a gun defense or a moving of the hand, measuring the defensive movement against merely pulling the trigger. That analysis is flawed. That analysis would mean that any defense would not be effective against this type of scenario. And the truth is, defenses can be made against a live handgun. Why? If the defensive movement can be so long and all the assailant has to do is pull a trigger, why can, how possibly can gun defenses work? Because there is a lag time, a space in time, separating the initial movement of the defender and the recognition and identification of that movement by the assailant. The gun defense should be complete by the time it registers in the brain and the brain analyzes, the assailant's brain analyzes that there's been a, an aggressive defensive move made to thwart the attack. Now, what is very, very important to remember is that all of our movements, again, must be made as small as possible, as inconspicuous as possible, without winding up, without stepping, without leaning, without telegraphing the defensive movement. Also, tactical considerations are taken advantage of. If there is an order, for instance, by an assailant to a victim, put up your hands, that assailant is expecting movement from the hands. And that would be the time to make the defense. You will see a number of situations where we take advantage tactically of the scenario that the assailant has laid out for us. But remember, always make the least detectable movement in the shortest distance possible to the weapon, create the, the earliest defense possible with movement, and also remove the line of fire from your target area, from you, in the shortest line off the body.
In looking at the frame of the gun on a revolver, we note that the barrel extends beyond the cylinder. The cylinder basically houses the rounds of ammunition. The casings and the projectiles are contained within each hole in the cylinder. And as the trigger is pulled on the weapon itself, the cylinder will rotate and place a fresh shell in front of the hammer of the gun. The hammer of the gun is what I'm pulling back on right now with my thumb. As the hammer falls, it hits the round, which causes an explosion, which propels the round down the barrel in a spinning type of action and through the air. What needs to happen for the gun to fire again is for this cylinder part to rotate, to put a fresh round in front of the hammer. Generally speaking, if we are grabbing the frame of the gun as part of our defense, some portion of our hand is likely to be grabbing the cylinder, which prevents the cylinder from rotating and thus prevents another round from being placed in front of the hammer and firing. Now, although this is not what we count on in, by any means for a defense, this does occur and we need to understand that. Do we still treat the gun once we've made the defense, even if we're grabbing the cylinder, as if it could be fired? Absolutely. But it's important to understand the mechanics of the gun uh, that we're dealing with. Let's now talk about a semi-automatic weapon. In this position, we deal with the semi-automatic weapon. From here, it is a flatter gun. S revolvers are often referred to as a wheel gun because of the cylinder. A semi-automatic gun is often referred to as a flat gun. And what happened, what's the distinction? Is that there is a space for a magazine. That magazine is loaded with rounds of ammunition. That magazine is placed up into the grip or handle of the gun. And there is a slide at the top of the weapon that can be activated. That activation takes the first round at the top of the magazine and places it ready to be fired in front of the hammer of the weapon. In this situation, if we grab the slide area of the gun in a defensive mo motion, if we grab the slide area of the gun in a defensive motion, the slide will not be able to cycle another round because the slide will be restricted in movement, which will prevent it from cycling another round to be fired. Now, in discussing the two types of weapons, generally, the semi-automatic handgun and the revolver, we have shown you real weapons. We do not use real weapons in the training. A number of accidents occur every year, people training with real guns and gun disarming techniques resulting in death or serious bodily injury to the participants. Even on a law enforcement level, accidents occur. We do not train in gun disarming techniques with live weapons. What we do do, however, is we work with a safety gun that is realistic in every respect to a real gun. This is the ASP ASP Red Gun. This manufacturer manufactures weapons in all different shapes and sizes for just about every weapon according to the specifications of the gun, according to the weight of the gun. It feels real and it is not, of course, capable of being fired. This is a safe, realistic weapon and this is the weapon that should be used for gun disarming training. To be absolutely clear, never use real guns for training purposes. Even if you feel that the gun is unloaded, we stay away from real guns. We use safety training guns. The ASP Red Gun is what should be used for absolutely safe training. In this next scenario, dealing with an armed assailant, we're going to deal with a gunman that approaches the victim from the front. This is common because in many street crimes, such as an armed robbery or an assault that arises out of some type of an argument, the attacker approaches the victim from the front to give orders or demands 
or to intimidate the victim. Remember, the gun can be presented at varying distances and at varying heights. In this view, we examine the stages of the exercise. In the first stage, Marnie is redirecting the line of fire while making a body defense. It's extremely important to note that this first defense is led by the hand. The hand defense leads the body defense. In addition, while speed, of course, is a very important element in any type of defense or attack, it is very important that this movement be highly undetectable. The less detectable the movement is, the less likely the gun will be fired in your direction or moved from your ability to defend against it. This next view depicts the gun being presented to the center of Marnie's chest. Marnie's left hand is coming in the shortest possible line to the gun. She's redirecting the line of fire. Notice how her right shoulder leaves the target area completing the body defense. The redirection occurs by the hand coming to the side of the gun and taking the gun off parallel to the ground. The gun is caught and taken down so that the gunman will not be able to pull back on the gun returning the line of fire to the defender. In addition, because the weight is on the gun, the gun is restricted in movement, so the line of fire cannot be turned back on us. Marnie can make attacks with her weight both on the gun and in her punch. From this position, her hand slides along her body, remaining out of the line of fire, to the hammer portion of the gun. A sharp leverage is created on the gun, and the gun is removed from the trigger finger at a 90 degree angle. Marnie can leave the scene once she secures the firearm. We'll examine and break down the various portions of this defense dealing with the gunman from the front for teaching purposes. First, Marnie is going to raise her left hand to redirect the line of fire. Notice the positioning of her hand with the thumb down. This will allow the gun to go off in a straight line. Marnie's hand will approach the gun from the side of the gun. This is to ensure that the gun is not raised or lowered in a diagonal line which would be longer along her body. The longer the line is, the line of redirection, the longer the gun will remain on the defender. It's important to take the gun off in the shortest distance possible. Also note that Marnie is making the most direct line to the gun. There's no swinging of her arm. There's no leaning in her body that precedes or telegraphs the defensive movement. The next stage is Marnie making the defense and grabbing the gun and straightening her arm. Her body defense is complete. Her right hand is up and ready to punch. At this point in time, the third stage occurs. After grabbing the gun and redirecting it, Marnie steps and enters with her weight on the gun. Marnie steps beyond the front foot of the threat of the attacker. She goes in deep at a slightly diagonal angle so that her right hand is lined up with the target area on the attacker's body. From this position, Marnie makes the, this third stage and pauses. Notice that her arm is straight. Her weight is forward on the gun, restricting its movement. Her right hand is up and delivers a punch. It should be noted this punch is delivered while Marnie is in movement to ensure maximum power. 
The fourth stage from this position, after the punch or punches, Marnie will take her right hand along her body, keeping it out of the line of fire, bringing it to the hammer area of the gun. The right hand will pull on the hammer area of the gun sharply. The left hand also contributing to creating leverage on the weapon. The gun will be turned to a 90 degree angle. Marnie then pulls the gun off the finger and at that point retreats from the scene. Stage one, redirection. Stage two, redirection and catching. Stage three, stepping in and punching. Stage four, taking the gun and leaving the scene. Consistent with all of our principles in Krav Maga, it is important that we have a technique that can be applied in varying circumstances. Here you see the gun was actually touching Marnie's chest. Also the gun can be placed at an intermediate range aimed at the chest. It can be placed at a rather far distance aimed at the chest. Of course, the gun could be placed in the middle of the torso, touching, intermediate range, further distance, at the stomach level, touching, intermediate range, further distance. It is also possible for the gun to be placed touching the head. At this position, it's important to note before Marnie makes the exercise that the body defense that was being made for the torso, that's at the shoulder level or below, was different than the body defense that's being made here when the gun is at the head. As Marnie's hand is rising, the gun will, the gun will still be placed on the head, but her head leaves the gun, creating the body defense going in to make the defense, counters, and take away. That was with the gun touching. The gun could be placed at an intermediate range at the head. Marnie makes the same defense, removing the head from the line of fire. And of course, at a further distance, the head moves off, the defense is accomplished. This allows one principle, our gun defense from the front, to apply to a variety of circumstances. This enables people to be brought at a high, to a high level in a relatively short time. In addition, it is possible that the gunman holds the gun in two hands. The same defense can be applied. The same takeaway also can be applied. Some important tactical considerations with regard to this exercise. In a situation where the gunman already is close in proximity to the defender and gives an order, such as raise your hands. Raise your hands. Is, is, is. Notice that the defender, Marnie, made the defense immediately. This is because once the gun comes up and the order is given, put your hands up. The gunman is expecting movement from the hands. And it is virtually impossible to tell the difference or discern the difference between one raising their hands and one making the gun defense. If Marnie were to raise her hands high upon this order, her hands would be at a disadvantage. Why? Because in this up position, Michael's peripheral vision as the attacker could pick up on the defensive movement more easily. In other words, the movement or the defense would be more detectable from this vulnerable position. However, if the gunman was at a distance and at a distance orders the defender to raise their hands, Put your hands up. there's little choice and the hands have to come up. However, if you <coughs> notice Marnie's movement, she did not raise her hands and separate her hands by a great distance. She plays the role of a victim and tries to put her hands up in the least threatening possible way, 
But as the gunman comes close, notice how close her hands were in a position to make the defense. Another tactical consideration. In a situation where the gunman presents himself and is close to the defender, it is possible for the defender to be in a stall or to hesitate. It is very possible for the defender at this position to ask a question of the gunman. The reason for this is that if the defender can elicit a response from the gunman, get the gunman to respond to a specific question, the gunman then is concentrating on the response and not pulling the trigger. What do you want? Give me your purse. <coughs> In this particular situation, the defense was made as the defender asked a question and the response was first being made. In my experience as a prosecutor, we've seen a change in how a gun is presented during street crimes, such as armed robberies. Normally, people would expect the gun to be presented like this, on a horizontal or parallel plane to the ground. But because of scenes in movies and other entertainment pieces, recently we've seen street crimes occur where the gun is not presented like this, but it can be presented at off angles or strange angles, like this. This does not impede or affect our defense. <coughs> In this exercise, up to this point, you've seen Marnie use her left hand to redirect the line of fire. It's possible that Marnie could be with a companion in the position that I'm in at this present time. If Marnie to, were to redirect the line of fire using her left hand, it would place her companion in the line of fire. This exercise is interchangeable, meaning that she can use her right hand to make the gun defense, deflecting it away from herself and her companion. In addition, if the gun is placed at an off a center line position, again, she could use her right hand where appropriate to take the gun off in the shortest distance from the body. This subject area will be covered in more advanced gun takeaway tapes. In this next scenario, we deal with a handgun threat that's placed to the side of the head. The defensive principles in this particular exercise we've already seen in the gun defense exercises when the gun was placed to the front of the body. In this particular view, we're going to examine how the defense is made. It's made between the hand, of, hand redirecting the line of fire and the body defense occurring by bringing the head straight back. The head drawing straight back and the hand moving the gun forward combine to create an earlier defense. It is important to note that Howard is bringing his head straight back. His hand is bringing the gun straight forward. This will ensure that the gun is taken off in the shortest distance. If Howard were to bring the gun in a downward motion, in a diagonal line, the gun would be on Howard's head for a longer period of time. The same is true if Howard were to raise the gun in a diagonal line. If he were to do this, the gun again would be on him for a long period of time. He's going to the gun in the shortest line and taking the gun off his head in the shortest line, removing his head from the line of fire. The timing is the hand leading first, and the head going back just before the hand reaches the gun. And now, Howard will demonstrate the exercise. For teaching purposes, we'll break this exercise into its various stages. Howard will rotate so you can have a view of the, of the exercise. 
Stage one, we practice by simply keeping the head in place and bringing the hand up. Notice the line how the Howard's hand and fingers approach the side of his head. The hand comes up almost behind his ear and he just practices flicking the hand forward. Fingers outstretch, palm forward. This is how the gun will be grabbed. Second stage is just to work on bringing the head straight back. These two combine for the earlier defense. This is stage one. From here, the gun will be caught, and from this position, the gun will be brought down as Howard turns his shoulders towards the attacker, stepping and entering to give an attack. Notice how Howard's front hand is straight with weight on the gun. The gun is brought towards the attacker. It is immobilized. From this position, stage three, is Howard reaching down towards the hammer part of the gun. Howard does not cross the line of fire with his hand. Howard has grabbed the hammer part of the gun and makes the twisting type breaking action, pulling the gun at a 90 degree angle off the finger. Stage one is the defense and catching. Stage two is turning and bringing the gun down, stepping inside. This is a step with a burst. Howard hits the target while he's in motion. Step three is to disarm the gunman. Step four is to retreat when it's safe to do so. The attacker approaches you again, this time with a gun, but he wants to conceal his identity. He's smarter. He's coming you, to you from behind. He places a gun at your back. He wants something from you. Amir will show the technique. Give me a wallet. Your hand motion leads the body motion and the strong turn, grabbing while delivering an elbow horizontal inward and forward. Continue. Trap the gun in two stages, take it out. Strike again and get out from the danger zone. And now from the other side, we see the opponent, the attacker, places a gun at your back. You look backwards, especially to see what's in the other hand. You start again with a head movement and a strong body movement to avoid the line of fire. Continue going in deep, counterattack with an elbow, a knee, and rotate to grab the gun and take it out. Remove yourself from the danger zone. Let's see the technique fast from the same angle. Let's see the technique fast from the other angle. By this you have a redirecting of the line of fire and avoiding the line of fire. You go in deep and trap the opponent's forearm with the hook like with your palm, with your hand. So he's 
forearm is trapped between your forearm, biceps, shoulder, chest, and hook hand. Your elbow is stuck to your ribs strongly to avoid any space that the opponent's uh, hand can be escaped through. We see how Amir is avoiding the line of fire while redirecting it also. He's trapping the opponent's forearm like a handcuff. It cannot move. After the elbow strike, you give a knee kick. Note that Amir's front leg, his left leg, his advancing leg, is very, very close to John's body. We are now going to demonstrate the learning stages. Let's build the first stage slowly. Start by looking and then with a hand movement and a body turn. Now we continue sending the palm of the hand forward while advancing towards the opponent. Note that you are sending your palm forward to trap close to the attacker's forearm. Now we are doing the whole first stage, which is with delivering the strong elbow. Grabbing strongly at the imaginary forearm. Now the next stage is grabbing and giving a knee. The third stage will be going to make the disarming. Remember the disarming being done in three stages. Grabbing, breaking the hold, pushing the gun away, and now going out away from the opponent. We see now a pistol pressed against your side, behind the arm. We see the technique that Michael is performing against Sam. It resembles very much the technique from the back. It's really a variation on it. So you start with a hand movement with the deflection and enter as close as possible to the opponent. You continue with an elbow strike, a knee, other contact access needed, and then this arm, and move back. After deflecting the line of fire, you send your hand forward to trap the opponent's forearm, preventing him from pulling the gun away from you he will not be able to redirect the gun. Step close to the opponent. Deliver a horizontal elbow forward and inward. Before the gunman manages to fall down, give, trap him, give him a knee. 
then turn yourself, grab the gun with the palm facing down, thumb to you. Break the hold on the gun in one strong motion, then push the gun away from the trigger finger. Move, remove yourself from the danger zone while attacking as needed. Note at Michael's deflection of the weapon and the hand of the, holding the weapon, then entering, bursting towards the opponent. Note that the defender's elbow. Michael is pressing his elbow against his ribs in order to maintain very strong pressure on the attacker's forearm, thus preventing him from pulling his hand away from the grab. Let us see how the exercise evolve and how we teach you this technique. First, start with the hand movement backwards. Then continue, it's a hand movement, and turning the palm. Now we add a step, strong and big step towards the opponent. Be ready to give an attack. And now a full defense and a counter attack. The hand movement, the body movement, the stepping in, counter-attacking with the elbow, then counter-attacking again with the knee. After that we finish with disarming, grabbing the pistol, turning it about 90 degrees to the palm, pushing it away from the hand and striking and then moving away from the opponent. Teaching around the world, I've learned that attackers, they attack in different manners, different ways. A person may approach you with a gun, stick it at the ribs behind your arm, covering the threat, so people around will not see that you are being robbed. In some other cases, he may approach you from the side and stick a gun at the ribs in front of the arm. Let us see John presenting the technique that we have against this threat. <coughs> we see now the hand defense redirecting the line of fire. We also see here that you send your body backwards to avoid the line of fire. This is your body defense. Your right hand comes from close to the body to grab the barrel. Note that two thumbs are high and the fingers are down in the grabs of the wrist, back of the hand, and the grab of the barrel. As John continues with the technique, you see the rotation of the barrel towards the opponent and under his forearm. This will disarm the opponent instantly. 
Beware not to bring your right hand in front of the line of fire. Pressure is applied against the thumb of the attacker's hand that's removing the gun very easily from his hand. Note the way John is deflecting and grabbing the attacker's wrist and back of the hand. This will eliminate the attacker's ability to redirect the line of fire towards your body by turning the gun towards you. Let's learn the technique by its stages. First, just we will isolate the hand movement. Sending your palm back and up and then forward to push the gun hand away. Now we will add the other hand, coming close to your body, grabbing the barrel. Like with this, we send the body backwards. Now we add, for the first stage of the defense, the step strong towards the opponent. With this, we remove ourselves from the danger zone, coming by the side or behind the gun. After fulfilling this stage, we go to the next stage, which is turning very strongly, pushing with the right, pulling with the left hand. Sending our shoulder towards the opponent's shoulder, the shoulder that the hand is holding the gun. After one and two, we continue with the knee, as we disarm completely, and then with other contacts as needed, and remove ourselves from the danger zone. Let us see this again. This is the first phase, the second stage, the third stage, and other contacts and remove and move from danger zone. In this next scenario, we deal with an attacker, an assailant armed with a handgun, that approaches the victim from the front. We've seen this exercise before, where the attacker, the assailant armed with a handgun, approaches and demands something. Maybe he wants information, maybe he wants property, maybe he wants to control the individual that he's approaching. This scenario is different and belongs to our family of more advanced techniques, because in this scenario, the assailant is controlling the victim by pushing the victim, by pushing the victim back while the line of fire is still on the victim. The push can send the victim's weight back, making it very difficult to defend forward. This variation in the threat from the front calls for a different response, an adjustment in our defense exercise. Micah will now demonstrate this adjustment and solve the particular problem. Gun threat from the front with a push, now demonstrated live. Mike will now only demonstrate from various angles just the redirection of the pushing hand in the smallest possible movement. Michael keeps his hand close to his body as he's turning to make a body defense in relationship to the gun. His hand stays close to his body as he redirects the push just before it reaches him. From this angle you'll see the same time from this exact angle, 
The defense is being made with this deflection. Michael's in a position to move in and counterattack. Removing the firearm. We now look at this exercise and break it down into its learning stages. Michael first works on the deflection. This is stage one. The hand comes up in an outside defensive position and will sweep away the pushing hand. At the same time Michael is making this motion, he makes a body defense. The sweeping motion for the outside defense and the body defense combine to send the hand away. As he is doing that, he's making the regular defense against gun from the front. All of this is stage one. Because the gunman is likely to have the gun close to his body, stage two involves taking the gun down or pinning it against his bo upper body. Michael steps in and stage three is the counterattack. Stage four will be added Stage four will be the disarming technique. Michael removes the gun and leaves. Stage one, the deflection, the catch of the gun. Stage two is trapping the gun against the body of the assailant, stepping in for stage three with the punch. Stage four is disarming and retreating from the scene. From the side view, one, two, and three, disarming. From the other angle, one, two, and three, disarming. Now we examine the ways to remove the gun from the assailant's hand. First we take the example of gun threat from the front. Michael here redirects the line of fire, attacks the gunman while controlling the weapon, and now he's in a position to disarm. Michael's punching hand comes down and catches the hammer portion of the gun. The wrist on Michael's hand, right hand will pull towards him the hammer of the gun, and his left hand will twist the barrel of the gun. This twisting motion creates a 90 degree angle in relationship to the trigger finger of the assailant's hand. Michael then pulls the gun straight off the finger so as not to create any type of resistance between the gun, the trigger guard, and the assailant's finger. A close-up view of this system of removing the gun from the hand will be shown. The breaking of the hold by twisting the gun, the removal of the gun at a 90 degree angle, the break, the take. We now examine gun threat from behind. In this position, again, the rotational turn of the body creates the defense. Michael is controlling the gun by trapping it against his chest, by completely surrounding it with a bent fist, wrist, straight forearm, and elbow being held in a down position. 
Michael reaches and catches the gun. Again, from that position, repeat the, the grabbing. As he goes to the gun, he can pivot, and his pinky is up, his thumb is down. Again, watch how the hand approaches the weapon. To have more leverage, it is better for Michael to catch the gun actually closer towards the end of the barrel. If he catches too deep on the barrel, he will not have as much leverage to remove the gun from the hand. In this gun takeaway position, the gun is taken in two stages. First, the hand and elbow break the gun downward sharply to a 90 degree angle in relation to the trigger figure. At this position, the gun is then raised straight off the finger so as not to cause any resistance. If the head of the gunman is up, Michael can attack with horizontal head strikes with the elbow. If the gunman's head is down the way it was before, with downward strikes with the elbow. The next exercise deals with gun threat from in front of the arm. In this position, Michael is redirecting the line of fire at the wrist area of the assailant, catching the end of the barrel. In this stage, the defense is made in one swift movement downward, causing pressure on the thumb of the assailant. Notice how Michael uses his weight and leverage on the gun to put all the pressure on the thumb by twisting the gun in its place and the barrel of the gun goes downward so that pressure is applied to the thumb of the assailant. This twisting action pits the power of Michael's shoulder and turning of the body and the grip of the gun all against the gunman's thumb, which is unable to withstand the pressure. The pressure on the thumb opens the fingers and releases the gun from the gunman's grasp. It is important to note that this is not done with the defender's wrist. Michael is turning in with his entire body weight over the gun, twisting the gun against and down, the barrel down against the thumb that is surrounding the grip of the gun. All this pressure applied to the thumb is too much to withstand the hold on the gun. And the gun is freed from the grasp of the gunman. And we are able to attack and leave the scene. We now examine gun defense from in front of the arm when the gun is held in the right hand in front of the right arm of the defender. The defense is essentially the same as we've seen. Michael steps in, but he's stepping into the live side. Examine the grasp on the gun from this position. Michael is turning the gun one and then two off the finger of the assailant. Because this gun takeaway is not as strong as the others that we've seen, because there is no pressure on the thumb of the gunman. When Michael defends from this position, he is twisting sharply to a 90 degree angle and pulling the gun straight off. It is also possible for Michael to issue counterattacks at the time he's making the disarming. This is to ensure a more rapid defense without resistance. We place the concentration somewhere else on the body rather than in the strength of the hand. But yet on its own, the leverage that's provided is strong enough to easily remove the gun from the hand. Note where Michael's hand is on the barrel of the gun. The leverage is increased the further out on the barrel that Michael places his hand, in this case his left hand. The other hand pulls in as he makes the twisting motion slightly downward and back off the trigger finger at a 90 degree angle, removing it from the assailant's grasp. In this view, we can see what occurs when we make the defense to the opposite side. Here, the gun is held in the right hand on Michael's right side behind the arm. Michael makes the turning defense, strikes, secures the arm, and now is in a position to disarm. 
From this position, he's breaking the gun down again against the thumb and then lifting the th gun off the trigger finger. Trigger finger is inside the gun. The gun is broken down against the thumb and lifted off the trigger finger. From this position, Michael can counterattack. Note that because of the relative position between the defender and attacker and the control that's afforded in this case, the trapping of the gun, Michael turns to the gun quickly. When he breaks the gun, he's bringing it in a downward motion against the thumb, which opens the fingers of the gunman. Now he lifts the gun off and can strike with his elbow or even the weapon itself, if appropriate. and can remove the gun from the scene. We hope that you've learned from this tape on Krav Maga gun disarming techniques. We'd like you to keep in mind a few things. One, safety and training. Make sure you are using only proper safety training devices. Secondly, remember the tactics that have been discussed during this tape. And also remember that this is a very, very high level threat. If you feel during a violent or assaultive type of confrontation, that cooperation with the assailant will get you through the danger, will help you to survive, then cooperate. Then do what you're ordered to do in order to survive. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you feel that no matter how much you cooperate, that you're going to be executed anyways, we have given you the tools to survive. These exercises are used by law enforcement, and these exercises have been applied on the street, and they work.
Krav Maga training seminars, instructor programs, apparel, Krav Maga services and merchandise. Visit our website at www.kravmaga.com.